Warning, the following content contains sounds. It has been shown that some sapiens of the Homo have episodic memory towards some sounds. Therefore, forming a bad reaction to certain sounds. Nevertheless, the sounds we use are only to mock actions and notions, which are, of course, ridiculous. We are not mocking the people who have them. No, no, no. Because you know in time, you may change what you do and change what you think. Having said that, this is a correlation sensation. A show where I talk about your mother's mammalian protuberances. Yes, yes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors and textures and smells. But of course, we will proceed to something more important. Hello. 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 You're real quiet, Void. Yeah. Void. Yeah. Do you know how long it's going to be until Gork and the Nut Gatherer get out of the kitchen? I don't know. No, I heard them in there earlier. I think they have a rotor rooter up Gork's ass. Really? Or something, maybe something about the drain, I don't know. Oh. Uh, I heard some dishes being tossed around, smashed. Yeah. Lo- lots of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said, make me my sandwich, woman. And then next thing I know, he tells her he can't eat the sandwich because he's on a diet. And then he threw the sandwich at her. And then I heard a lot of heavy petting. Next thing I know... The bird squawking on the ground, and I had to walk out because it got a little graphic there. A little too gushy? Yeah, a little lot. Like, really a lot. Giving her an old sprinkler, eh? Oh, there's a sprinkler going on there. More like a geyser. Old Old Faithful. faithful. We had more in common than we thought, Void. I know. So, how was your week? Good. Now we're kind of like recording in the middle of the week now. How, uh-huh. how do you feel about that, Vaughn? It's fine. Yeah? We did. It worked last week. Yeah, it worked every day of the week for me. Uh, Gork was hawking loogies last week, and so he decided to change it so he wouldn't be all uh, phlegmy on the uh, podcast. Yeah, he's, he's always phlegmy, Void, but more so now. Yes. Yeah, more so. Yeah, he had a respiratory, then another thing, and then now a cold. Yeah. Good thing is, he got one of those at-home tests. Uh Uh-huh. And came up negative. So he's out and about. Yeah. Strutting his stuff. He likes making people feel uncomfortable, too. He documents it. He has a little notebook. Carries it around. He coughs. And then he watches people's reactions to the cough. And a lot of people get really mad at him. And almost pop one of his meninges. Oh, where was that at? Oh, that was at Walmart. Ah. It was a big old lady on one of those electric scooters. She had a cane. So she's part of a biker gang? The little rascals? And more like hogs gone wild. She I'm had them. left speechless. She had a four of a clock shower. She got she got big old you know what come think of it, might be a man wearing a big old moo moo. Don't know really. He took a video of it. It was not very fun. Scared me. You should have just said I have a cold, I tested negative, I'm good. Oh, he tried to. 
He he most certainly did. He actually wore a shirt. He wrote it in Sharpie on a white shirt. Says COVID negative. Testing social experiment. It did not go over very well. Can only hope for the best. He's grown a little attached to his his offspring you and him created. Don't remind me. He says this this new strain is a little bit more docile. They've calmed down over the successive generations. At first he was a little mad because where you know you and him hatched an idea with the command of Captain Gooch Gobbler. Gooch Gobbler. What a funny name. You aliens are quite weird with your names. You guys make it up on the fly like? I don't know. You don't know. You you are a mouthful of words, Void. Just a fountain full of wisdom. Just beautiful. You know, you're like a mountain. You know, don't say shit. Next thing you know, you start standing still in the middle of winter, collecting snow, not saying nothing. Is this turning into Spinal Tap? Am I going to turn the stone hinge? Spinal Tap? What? No, I'm just saying it sounded like a bit from Spinal Tap. There's a bit? I'm not sure I know of this Spinal Tap. It's a parody document- mockumentary about a rock band, and they say stuff kind of like that. Oh, turn it up 11. Exactly. Right. That's right. Turn it up 11. I remember that. What was it, M&M's or Skittles? They all have to be one color only. Only one color. If there's one out of color, the whole show must be canceled. Well, actually, the thing is, there's actually a reason behind they did that. Oh, I'm pretty sure there's a reason. Is Shut up. Stop listening to me, Google, you fucking hoa. Stupid phone. The reason they asked for the different colors was to see if they paid attention and read the thing. Oh. Yeah, because if they didn't if they didn't put the colors like they said, they didn't read it because there were safety things they had for the crew too. Little interesting? Yeah. Sounds a little pretentious to me. But I guess everybody's got their thing. I don't know. I think if they just asked about it, they were okay with They didn't have to do it. They said, are you sure about this? And if they mentioned it, it was cool. Do you have any idea what we're supposed to be doing on this recording? I mean, Gork told us to go ahead and record and see if we could do anything at all. Let me see if I can find something on this computer. Ooh. You got gorillas going wild. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, have you seen that position before? That's that's quite awkward. Hey, it stuck a banana up that gorilla. I don't think this is legal. I, I think this is considered illegal here and in most countries. I wouldn't know anything about that. I don't touch his computer. He's a good idea. There's a little sticky stuff on here. I don't know exactly what it is. You never know with Gork. He's touching everything in sight. It's probably why he got sick so much. You know, he's not not very wise to go touching every fluid known to mankind and sticking it in your mouth. Well, he thinks he owns it if he licks it. You think so? You 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 like to spank? For other people, right? No. Wait. You just you just said he thinks he he owns it if he puts his mouth juices on it, right? Well, I'm only guessing. I'm wondering why he licks everything. Well, I think he might be trying to sense the sensations of various things. You know, like. Trying to see the human experience with something 
that he never experienced before. You know, kind of like, wow, being a human is wild. It's so magical. You know what's really crazy is? He's like a toddler who's grown all up. What's the funny thing, Void? That uh, taste is just another way of your tongue feeling stuff. Right. You can actually feel with your tongue, Void. No, I know, but that's what taste is, feeling, too. You know what I read in an article a while back? Most of taste actually comes from your olfactory sensory, Mm. your nostrils. So if you pinch your nose like so... Hence why when you need to take medicine, you pinch your nose. Exactly, Void. Exactly. Hence why smokers, unfortunately, have issues with tasting sometimes. Right. Right. That's why I gave up me, me fags. That's why I gave them up. Gotta stop smoking the fags if you want to taste a nice, wonderful life. Yes, and you end up like the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean that everything turns to ash in their mouth. N- that never happened to me. Okay, good. I- I- is this become a cursed skeleton. Is this something you you believe happens based off a movie? No, I know it's fake. I'm just quoting it because it sounds oh. funny. Oh, you made a joke. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I, I don't know if you're joking sometimes because you're so dry. Yet at the same time, I know you're not actually a human. So I'm, I'm here in some kind of standstill teetering thinking maybe you're joking maybe you're not so it's best for me to keep quiet but now we got some alone time i can actually speak to you and now i'm kind of starting to understand you which is kind of odd you know it's good i guess i guess if i gotta be held captive by you lot might as well make the best of it yep Okay, we got Pentagon. Hey, that's that's a that's a military place, right? Pe- Pentagon. Yeah, he's got Pentagon files right here. Specific description of you two. You know that they got a specific description of you two, and I think Gork is trying to mess with the Pentagon on their info. You know. Hey, this guy's in there a lot of wild stuff. He's got like three or four different VPNs. He's a wild guy. VPNs are legal. Yes, VPNs are legal. Bestiality porn, on the other hand, alongside with, you know, infiltrating government information, is another thing. It's just a word document, not anything else. Yes, let's let's go with that one. Let's let's go. Just a word document. Just a little story. Gork is made up because he's so infatuated with himself, trying to make himself sound great. You know, that's that's exactly. Let's. That feels a lot better. Say that than to say Pentagon information. He's infiltrating, breaking several laws, treason. You don't want to do that. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Look what it did with Snowden. Anyways, I think I found exactly what Gork wanted to do. Episode 105. Humphrey Ridley. Uh, hey, what you talking about over here? We're holding the weight of uh, the podcast. I'm yeah. listening to them, sweetie. There being a bunch of faggots in here. What? Baguettes? Faggots. We he was talking about cigarettes. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about tickling each other's butts. We we got a recording here saying nothing of that sort. You're lying, sweetie. I, I think she's fantasizing about you and me, boy. Hey, don't you talk about my woman like that. Right. Oh, all right, I won't talk about your woman like that, Gork. Anywho, Humphrey Ridley, right here, right. Yeah, that's right. 
Move over. Hey, you want me to go, Gork? Yeah, I want you to go, you son of a bitch. All right. My woman is no dog. You take that back. I have something to show you in the kitchen, Tom. Oh, no. Please, Cork, whatever you do. Listen to my woman. I believe it's the probe. Yeah, the thing you said, roto Rudu. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my Grand Canyon of an ass crack is ready for some more. I might as well just keep my ass in the air. And you just shut up and you do what you're told. Ooh. Tom! Oh, god damn it. I'll be right over there. Okay. Cut. Now, where were we? What were you two doing? What is this file doing open on my computer, Void? That's just the one about the, uh, Ridley. How do you... Oh, man. Oh, Tom Nye, you let them alone for one moment. And Tom Nye takes Void along to show what I'm doing on my computer. We didn't... Exposed nothing. Yes, yes, yes. Nothing was exposed. Except for this, and except for that, and except for that. God damn it, Void. Now, where were we? Yeah, really. Episode 105. Boop, 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 boop. I feel so alive. Boop, 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 boop. Getting jiggy. With it. With Miss Woman. Brings me to my next topic. So, I gave the nut launcher a shot. Finally. Finally. Without your help. Well, duh, he's local, so you just walked up over to him and gave it to him. Yeah, but it would be nice to have some help around the place. I know, but you already got it done lockdown. Apparently not. Took me over a month to give him that shot. I got a lot on my mind, Void. What's that? Humphrey Ridley. Or human of primary interest today. All oh, right. Yes. Have you heard of the story about this guy? The Hood of Robin? Yes, Robin Hood. Yes, Robin Hood. There's a patch of a wooded land named Thief's Wood. You have uh, heard of this? Yes. From this story, right? Yes. Yes. It's actually located in a place of Mansfield, Nottinghamshire of England where this thief did his dirty work. All I have cared to read about this glorified swindler mentioned is uh, the earliest known article regarding the legend. And you want to hear a little quote about this poem written in old English? Yes. Maybe I shouldn't have sent Nye away. It would have been wonderful to hear him talk about this. I'm going to pretend that this word that looks like look is look. They just spelt it for me. That's old English for you. Look ye do no husband harm. That tilleth with his plow. No more. Ye shall no good, ye men, that walketh by green wood. Sha. Okay. Ne no knight, ne no squire, that would be a good fellow. Then they top off this poem with this quote. He was a good outlaw, and did poor man much good. Oh, okay. So he's saying he was in the woods. Stole from the rich and gave to the needy. Yep. The only people he hurt were the dirty and greedy. Something like that, right? Yes. Remember that movie you show me with the big green ogre? With the tiny ears, he lived in a swamp. Oh, with the donkey? Yes, with the donkey, my favorite. Yeah, and they had the Robin Hood guy. Yeah. That was him, wasn't it? Yes. Well, it was a telling of all fairy tales, and they mixed in other uh, tales in with it that were medieval-related. Like, sometimes they had King Arthur references that 
Robin Hood and all that kind of stuff and godparents and three bears and big bad wolf and all that kind of stuff. And the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man. Exactly. Yes. You're not my gumdrop buttons. Oh, yes, your gumdrop buttons. That Farquaad's a character. What'd you call me? That was the name of the villain in Shrek, Farquaad. Oh, Lord Farquaad. Exactly. Yes. So, I copied and pasted this claim to be quoted text from Wikipedia, which is source one. I didn't desire to continue checking the sources with editors, references on the specific article for that legendary human, which happens to be larger than the one our main sapien of the homo is. Unfortunately, Humphrey Ridley is not well known and uh, just a mere smear on history. Like a little speck. Like if you were to read a book on the history of neuroscience, he'd be like a little crumb. You would try to flick off the page. Is that small? Why are you trying to flick off a uh, ant? You dirty, dirty whore. You HIV positive slut. Oh, wait, that's me. Shit. Did you like your dinner, sweetie? I, I mean your dessert. <laughs> oh, yes. Nothing like breakfast in the nighttime void. Nice yes, syrupy Brenner. blue waffles. Anywho. Lots of... Sugary, milky, creamy we're, syrup on my waffles. We're glad you have come back with me and uh, started recording. Okay, everyone's here. Now, we are talking about source number two. Claims that Mansfield, Nottinghamshire of England, was the birth town of Humphrey Ridley, which is also the region associated with Robin Hood. Now... I have another article from JNS, which seems a little bit more, you know, special in academia. And this source indicates that Humphrey was born just 14 miles from Nottinghamshire. That's pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, not far. Unless if you're walking, which is probably what most people did. So, this is the sort of land Humphrey Ridley was born in during the year of 1653, current era. His name was Humphrey? Humphrey Ridley. That's a, that's a sexy name. Would you like your sand, baby? Yes, I would. Where is it? It's on top of the laptop over there. Thanks, Lunookum. You're welcome, Bobbly Boo. All these pet You two names. make me want to puke. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, it's oh. so sweet. I wish I could find a lovely like her. You you have. She gave birth to you. She no. is your lovely. No, no, no. Actual lovely. Not motherly love, but love, love. Did you forget about all the good times? I want my own snookums, not just mom. Oh, you, you want to replace me, sweetie? No one can replace you. It's just... That's right. Yeah. Speaking of, you know, parents, the paternal gamete donator and guardian is communicated to have been named Thomas Ridley. So that's the father, if you didn't know what I was saying earlier. Once at the age of 18, Humphrey enrolled into Merton College at Oxford. So during this time, at Merton College, during the 17th century... It was labeled by some the cradle of modern neuroscience in the United Kingdom. In Oxford? Yes, Merton College at Oxford. Ah. Yeah. The specific name of the human that said it was the cradle of modern neuroscience had the last name of Compston. Compston. This was in 2012. Okay. The reason given is that, and I quote, greats such as Willis matriculated here, end quote. That's source three. I haven't seen the word matriculate prior to this episode's research, so I looked it up. And logically, matriculate, if you didn't know, means signing up, enrolling, etc. Oh, so the hotbed of activity of 
newly signed up people for neuroscience. Gotcha. I thought it meant like you were on some really trippy drugs and you were matriculating. Oh, we huh. wish. Gesticulating? Just speculating. Ejaculating? Yes. Mm. That's the best. Yes. So, in 1671, Humphrey Ridley began his higher schooling at the Merton College. Only to... Gr- what did you do with Tom Lye, anyways? He's somewhere in the kitchen. With Dinah? Did you put him in the garbage disposal? He's... Parts of him are in the air fryer. What? That's where cannibalism we happens. Need, we need to put them back together, boy. I don't know. Do we have enough in the regenerator to make another Tom Nye? Yes. All the experiments I did, I've collected all I sorts of stuff. off his fingers and toes. Woman, how are we supposed to get them to clean our ship? Can you use his nubs? You see this? His nubs. Now he's handy capable. Quote unquote. Handy capable. Yes, he is. He can still do stuff. Give him a week to heal a little. He can do all the normal things except for pick his nose. Unless if he had some object taped to his hand. I mean where his hand was. His hands are still there. Oh, so he It's just his fingers and toes. So when instead of a high five, he'd be giving me a hand zero. I wanted chicken wings, but we're out of chicken. He's not going to like that joke. We better stimulate his stem cells on his nubs. I kind of like it when he flips me off. Yeah, give that old Cogni uh, attitude. He can still do that with sign language. Make a fish. <laughs> yeah, he can't make a fist anymore. But he can pretend to make a fish. Woman, please. Yes. I already had my panda screwed over by Void. Please don't take my other pet. Okay, I was just joking. I didn't cut off his fingers and toes and put him in the air fryer and then put hot sauce on him and eat him. Is that why you have a little bit of red hot sauce on your cheek? No. Okay. Sure, honey. I believe you. Just just don't ask to see Tom's nubs. I mean hands. His nuggets. Yeah. You know who didn't have his nuggets cut off and fried? Who's that? Humphrey Ridley. Oh, okay. Let's keep going. Yeah, on 1671. Back to topic. Yes. Yeah. Humphrey Ridley began his schooling, like I said. Only to graduate at the University of Leiden in 1679 at the age of 26 or somewhere around this age, since specific dates for his birth were not given or for when he graduated. The yeah. degree, what? Oh, it's kind of murky when stuff goes back that far, we've learned. Uh, some people have a lot more dates before the sapien of the homo. I believe. Galen had some pretty good dates. It's been a while since I covered him. Anywho. You you went on dates with a man? The degree Humphrey received was doctorate in medicine. The thesis Humphrey wrote in order to earn his degree was based on sexually transmitted diseases. STIs. So you're just going to... Ignore my question. What's questions. a studsy? STIs? I said sexually transmitted diseases. STI is sexually transmitted infections. Yep. What, they change it's it now? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, they changed it. You didn't know that? I know, because in high school, well, I went to high school. You didn't. Um <laughs> I went to high school, woman. Oh, oh, you went to high school, huh? Did you learn that at the whorehouse? You put lemon juice on it. If it burns, don't sleep with them. How'd you know that, Void? 
How did you know it? How many it whore houses have you been? Well, I mean, your well, mom. I've seen it in movies, and plus old guys describe it as a joke. How home do you movies, know if it right? burns you? Your mommy's home movies? No, no, no. It was a comedy. I've seen those home movies. I've seen you every once in a while in the background, bobbling around. What if they know that trick, and they know not to scream when it stings? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. But could you guys guess what type of disease he was talking about? Herpes. Syphilis. Okay. Let's let's say. Okay. Seventeenth century, right? Uh huh. These are wiggy times, right? Oh, crabs. Okay, the nut gatherer was correct. Syphilis. Oh, okay. Because uh, a lot of Europeans, or some Europeans, went around America raping a lot of people. Specifically, Columbo. I mean, Columbus. Christopher Butt Lumbus. Yeah, that piece of shit. Yeah, so he brought syphilis back, and it spread like wildfire. Then it became a pandemic. People celebrate that piece of, of shit. I'm um, not. Well, some might. Well, uh, there's a Columbus Day. Still? I think they are. Didn't they change it? I don't know. I don't pay attention to humans. <laughs> Me neither, but they holiday. never should have celebrated that piece of shit. They need it. Yeah, he would chop off limbs of children if they didn't bring them gold. That sounds like a good idea for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just chop up children. We could just do that with nine. Get me some gold. Oh, you didn't bring me any gold? <laughs> I mean. He already lost all his fingers. That's yeah. kind of what slow. happened to him today. Uh, stem cell growth. Yeah, just steal my water there. You know we can make him grow back his fingers and toes, Void. How do you know? Even humans know how to do that. Of course, they are kept under wraps by secret government agencies. I've been. I've I heard they're trying to bring the mammoth back this year. Like an actual mammoth? You know that thing went extinct for a reason, right? It wasn't because you and I started trying to tip it over when I was sleeping. But it was because it's too warm for it. Did you know that they're supposed to be coming out with actual evidence that there is land underneath Antarctica? Yeah, we got to cover that up, Void. I don't know what we're going to do, but we got to cover that up, boy. Yeah. Well, the crazy thing is, if we were trying to... The one thing about the, the movie Jurassic Park, I don't think they'd be able to breathe our air. So they'd all just die instantly. Well, mammoths would be able to. Ah. Because they're around during humans. Ah, yes. I think the air was still a little bit different then. Yes, yes. It was a lot less musty. But that's not why they died. No. I watched the Ice Age like a million times. Sid was my favorite character. You love Ray Romano too? Well, he reminds me of myself a lot. Very proud of that one. Yeah? Like because yes. he's big and sexy? You know, that big yes. Bushy, bushy, bushy. Those stuff. big eyes. Quit giving us the bedroomized woman. What? I'm in the mood today. No, no hanky panky. I mean, you guys already uh, used the rotor rooter on yourselves in the kitchen while me and Tom and I held down the fort. I didn't use the rotor rooter. Stop uh, calling our ship a fort. Ah, uh, it's much more than a fort, fort. It's a metaphor. Yes, metaphor. Yes. Uh huh. What are you saying, metaphor for? I don't know before. Okay. Back to the top. Okay. After this, you know, thesis he wrote in becoming a doctor, Humphrey became an MD at Cambridge. Monster in- Dick? Yes, Floyd. Monster Dick. Not medical doctor. Well, we're talking about dicks today. He, he grew his dick so big it became a monster. Yes. Why do you yes. think he had so many STDs? Exactly. It, actually, he got a monster dick from being so inflamed from all the STDs. Yes. And that's why he focused Could primarily. Could syphilis affect the brain, too? Yes, and you don't have big dick-itis from 
I think Except it was there. I think it was elephantitis of the penis. That uh, makes so much sense. From yes. the bee sting? You're listening to a ridiculous hour with the not gather and void with Gork trying to go on to topic. Sorry, sweetie. Go ahead. Back to topic. We allow you now. Six, Sorry you're spiking the mic. 16, Sorry, listeners. 1688 at Cambridge. At the age you of came 30. on a bridge, what? God damn it. Cambridge University. Who came on a use of university? Yes. At the age of 35. Which is monster dick. Our primary human of interest medical doctor wasn't finished there. No, no, no. No. Twelve years after becoming a doctor, Humphrey became a candidate for the College of the Royal College of Physicians. Oh. Remember that? Not the I, Royal College of Winterhelm? Sounded like you said candy dick. So he went from a mi- monster dick to a candy dick. Everybody knows what the nut gatherer thinks about all the time. Because she talks about it all the time. Her favorite song is Adidas from Corn. <laughs> How did you know? Oh, she's your mom. Yes, she used to play it in the car on the way to the uh, daycare. Perfect setting for that kind of song. Before I went to church. But the funny part is the daycare was at the church. Yep. We all burst in the flames walking in. Yeah, I have a feeling you knew Jeffrey Epstein. Nope. Never met the guy. Don't you ever put me in that category. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okie dokie. It's more like, you know, Pope. Yeah, so Humphrey became a candidate for the Royal College of Physicians, which is mandatory to be practicing medicine in London of the year of 1691, which made him the age of 38, or somewhere around there. If you're not familiar with the the Royal College of Physicians, we have multiple episodes where we talked about it. So, once 1694 came around, when Humphrey was 41, he became what is called a Gostonian lecturer for the Royal College of Physicians. The position of Gostonian lecturing was a position founded based off of some whale of a human named Theodore Goldston, obviously following his death in the year of 1638. This is when this position became real. This lecturing position only began seven years later in the year of 1639. This is all a part of the Royal College of Physicians. Back to Humphrey Dumfrey Do of Nottingham. You know who Humphrey reminds me of? Who? Remember when you were talking about, you know, the humpback? Ah, yeah, your your fantasy man. Yes. (laughs) My fantasy man. She has this thing where she calls me Hook and has me arch my back like a cat. And uh, she runs her vagina up and down my vertebral spine to get off to it, Void. It's my favorite orgasm. Wow, so she, you're ribbed for her pleasure. Yes. Yes. And Super ribbed. I... After this, Void, I get a wet back. <laughs> she like a she pees whale. on you and calls it rain? No, my nut. No, she she comes on me, Void. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's she's pretty good at it too. It's like a snail trail. <laughs> you do know that's a salty ball sack trail, right? No, it's a, it's a uh, snail trail. I mean, there might be some saltiness from my nutsack there, but it's it's a very viscous, clear fluid. Kind of like saliva. But sticky. But sticky. 
So her pre-cum kind of and juices. Mm, more like actual cum from her skin's gland. Yes. Uh, is female ejaculate. It is said that after all his lecturing, Humphrey did, it established his reputation being quote-unquote satisfactory for the Royal College of Physicians. Along came 1695, where Humphrey is credited for composing a written work called a treatise titled The Anatomy of the Brain Containing Its Mechanisms in Physiology. As the title indicates, Void, the treatise was an anatomical one regarding the various parts of the brain. What highlights can one mention about this treatise someone might be thinking? I will now give you a list, Void. Compliments to JNS. You ready, Void? He's yes. definitely ready. What are you doing on your goddamn phone? Do we have to get a lockbox for your phone? No, I just had the... I looked Look, up Snail Trail. I am... Oh, nice. Nice. What? <laughs> what did you find out besides... You were correct. It was a vagina. I was... I was surprised you didn't come across... This is how snails lay their eggs. Which is trail <laughs> of their juices. Oolai, oolai, oolai. Sorry, I'm singing Robin Hood for some godforsaken reason. Mm, I wonder why. Did you watch that movie recently? No, we're talking about it. Oh. Because of uh, the... Nottinghamshire? God- yeah, it's the p- place where Robin Hood is based off of. That he is uh, 14 miles away from where he grew up. Where Humphrey Ridley was born. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so it's very nice. So I have a list. Would you guys be willing to listen? Yes, sir. Sure. Well, I'm not you, honey buns, because I know you're very attentive because you know I got what you want. That's true. <laughs> Number one, the Venus anatomy, or Venus, meaning Humphrey did work to reveal the blood supply in return for the brain. Number two, we have arachnoid matter, although there was some Swiss guy who uh, made some cheese. And, of course, also is credited for discovering the arachnoid matter, no matter who discovered it first. Some have claimed that he uh, was the first to discern the difference between the arachnoid matter and the other layers. Of the meninges, which would be the pia mater and the dura mater. Remember, Void? I talk about meninges all the time. Yes. You got the three layers. Top, dura, for being durable. Pia is like fragile. I forgot, maybe Greek, probably, because meninges, I believe, is Greek for sack. That's why I call my sack on top of my, my sacks on top of my head, my superior meninges. I love your sacks on your head. Yes. Yeah. I like to rub them. Oh, yeah. When I go to the kitchen. Save it for after the podcast. Let's go now. Your son is such a cock I don't block. care what he says. Okay, and we're back. Woo. <laughs> oh. Why are you guys panting? Because you were really happy. Oh, it really. Why is there a snail trail on the ground? Well. Never. That's what never, happens. Never mind you with that. Lloyd. Oh, okay. Never mind I don't have you. a bump on my head. We were playing, which is, uh, you know, we were role-playing. He brought up my favorite guy, my fantasy man. Yes. We were playing sword fighting, and you got in the way because you are trying to stop us for it. And I kind of uh, whacked you on accident. On accident, I swear. Okay. As long as you pay the medical bills, I'll be fine. That's okay. We got enough here to treat you. Okay. I mean, what kind of hospital would you go to? They'll be able to have you grow back your fingers and toes. We can do that here. This is a bump. Yes, that's what she said. No, no, it was a hump for you. It was more than that, Void. Humpty Dumpty had nothing to worry about. Okay. Yes. A little hump in the dump, you know. Could be in the garbage man. Hey, man, I do what I can, being the garbage man. Oh, 
We're going to go back to topic. Sorry, I got to edit on myself. Oh, okay. So where were we? Number three, subarachnoid cisterns. These are larger spaces where the cerebral spinal fluid will accumulate in your head. This fluid is between the two innermost layers, which are the arachnoid matter and the pia matter. The name of the space between the two mentioned meningy layers is called the subarachnoid space. But there are specific locations, and everybody's anatomy is slightly different, where there have gaps large enough, which are called the superarachnoid cisterns. Ah, so it's for holding stuff, like a cistern. Gotcha. I mean, it just naturally just collects the fluid because it's larger, like a like a little bubble in the, or like a, a little groove in the river. You ah. Know, alters the flow, you know. Number four, the blood-brain barrier. As the name suggests, this is a barrier between the blood supply to the brain and the cerebral spinal fluid, which is the end result of the allowed biological components that feed, bathe, and help the brain poop. It's made up of several cells. We will go over at a later date. Yes, waste management in the brain is very important. Most definitely. Number five. The cranial nerve number five. <laughs> Actually, the cranial nerve five ganglia. If you have listened and remembered some of our sections over the fifth cranial nerve and all the others, the 12, which is called a trigeminal nerve, you will know this nerve has three branches, hence the name tri, or hence the part tri in trigeminal. Along with the fact that this nerve primarily serves for sensory information, meaning this nerve has afferent signals being sent towards the central nervous system from the face so you can process sensation. The ganglia, well, is if you paid attention and remembered, are nerve cell collections, or groups of nerve cells, rather, that are the main connection, connecting nerves from, you know, the central nervous system or to the central nervous system from the branches of the trigeminal nerve. The five points I just mentioned from this book are strictly from the JNS article, which is source four. Of course, source six, Washington.edu, which is where I read the timeline for this podcast, doesn't mention any of the above on the list, but rather item number six. And this is the rest of form body. This anatomical structure, or these anatomical structures, is what many call a cerebellar peduncle, meaning it connects the brain to the spinal cord. The rest of form body is a subdivision of the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Inferior, meaning below, of course, if you haven't been around. Now, if this is your first podcast, I know we're pretty deep into this episode, but goddamn, if you want to know, we got a bunch of information here. This is the 105th episode. Yes. It's not like we just started and said this is number 105. Yes. That's not what happened? What say you, Void? Do you really have that short term of memory? She might. I just thought you guys were making up numbers. Yes. If I was to make up a number, it would be blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Episode blah blah blah. Bluey. <laughs> yes, I like that number. Yeah, we could have episode blue in your hooey. Oh. I think you save it for the like bedroom, you two, or the kitchen, times. whatever suits your fancy. Skiddly doo bop doo bop boo. I mean, let, twice. Just let me leave. You don't have to knock me out next time. The other time, time was with Tom. Void, you are getting in the way. I know, but you can just, when we're done recording, you can so usher me out. So twice with you. You know when nature calls, you can't really just ignore it, Void. That's going to a bathroom, not sex. I mean, they say nature calls. That's kind of ambiguous. It's definitely better with you, sweetie. Nature has me going all sorts of things. Oh, okay. You know, it's in my nature to fart, belch, pick my zits, pick my nose, cough, fuck, eat. Do not ignore nature, Void. I try not to. Good idea. So, 
rather than being inferior in function, for it includes nerve fibers bundles, which are white matter. We've already covered that. It's not a complete list, but, you know, these white matter tracts include the olivo, the reticulo, the cuneo, the trigeminal, which is probably how the trigeminal ganglia were found by this dude, and the dorsal spinocerebellar peduncles. We've covered these before, but it's been a while. We might cover it, might not, again. Who cares, right? Who cares? Those are some fucked up names. Which ones? All of them. They make much sense. Trigeminal? That makes sense. Cuneo? I like that Yeah, but it's, they're just weird. You're with a guy named Gork, and your name is not Gatherer. Well, that's not my... Okay. And our second to last new member of the tribe is the Nut Launcher. Anyways... We're going to go on to source number three, Deep Dive. It's a Deep Dive article, and it indicates the next item on the list, the choroid plexus. I believe we've covered this. It's underneath the corpus callosum and thalamus. The who, the what, the what, 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 you say? One might think. If one cuts the brain mid-sagittally, mid-sagittally, they will separate the left and right hemispheres. You know, void. What you call that, hot dog style? <laughs> Excuse me. You farted, but I'm pretty sure we didn't pick it up. Did you listen? I added some spice to your spice on the last episode. <laughs> we kept the rumble, and we made a reverb and amplified it so the listener would know what we experienced. Shook my very soul. <laughs> I don't think I got to that part. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you dozed off or got to something else on your phone, huh? No, I just kind of skimmed. I wanted to listen to the end song, too. He was looking at titties, like oh, always. Yeah. Haven't been able to fully do the end song yet. Because I can't seem to get away from getting sick. COVID brought all his buddies, too, apparently. We got the cold and some new virus people don't know shit about because everybody's focused on COVID. There's not enough money to go around to see all these thousands of different viruses that humans have. Or just a Petri dish. Basically? Humans came from the Petri dish. I know. By primordial ooze. And they keep on trying to grow out of it, but they can't seem to evolve past it. They'd have to alter their entire biological functions to get away from it because they rely on it. Their bodies actually rely on it. You start killing them all off by taking all these antibiotics and you introduce these other ones who are resistant to your antibiotics and they grow, they flourish, and they eat at your very body starting with your entire intestinal tract. Then they breach the wall and they go into your bloodstream And they go everywhere, sometimes going past your blood-brain barrier. Back to topic number seven, choroid plexus. You cut open the brain, right? Hot dog style. We've done it many times, hot dog style. Not that way, Void. Oh, you weren't thinking that. No, I wasn't. So after you cut the brain, there would be a C-shape that has the opening facing down. It's directly in the middle of the brain. But above the pocket that you would see, just look up a picture on Google. Grope Google, okay? Where the lateral ventricle is, which is that pocket. This is called the corpus callosum, which is the information highway for both sides of the cerebrum to Ah. communicate to each other. And if you didn't know, all the way back as far as Galen or maybe even before, corpus callosum is like Greek for like tough body. Then there is an area just below this pocket forming the floor of the ventricle, which is like a tear shape called the thalamus, which is the floor of that, you know, that blah, blah, blah. Just below that, just below what I just talked about, is the choroid plexus. It's a nifty little piece, this choroid plexus. It consists of two types of matter. One would be pia matter, 
and the other would be epithelial cells. The second type of matter mentioned, the epithelial cells, is part of the ependema, which are the glial cells that make the membranous lining of the ventricles. This membrane I'm talking about is what forms the cerebral blood barrier, a.k.a. the blood-brain barrier. I guess the new term for it is the cerebral spinal blood barrier, which makes more sense than the blood-brain barrier. The most important thing to know about this choroid plexus is that it synthesizes cerebral spinal fluid, or the acronym, which is CSF. There is another choroid plexus that we could talk about, which is just beneath the fourth ventricle, which is on the interior and inferior to the cerebellum, which is that little strawberry thing on the back part of the brain known to process a lot of information like balancing and breathing and all that shit. So right when the fourth ventricle starts to head down towards the brainstem, just behind the brainstem void, is the other choroid plexus. So all seven of these items will be covered in more depth. Well, at least most of them. The ones I want to, damn it. It's your podcast. God damn right. It's our podcast. Our podcast. What was noted by the JNS article is that Humphrey used state-of-the-art methods during his time, which would be tinged wax in mercury, also known as quicksilver. These were used to highlight the vasculature of the brain into the brain. Not only this, but these were cadavers of humans hung after being found guilty of various crimes. The term venous engorgement was used to describe what happened to their brain's vasculature. Making it reasonable to speculate, this helped them recognize the anatomical blood supply to the brain. Not much different than Thomas Willis did with his dye. Seeing that these people were hung, making their vasculature larger, engorged, if you will, would logically make someone easily want to note what's going on in the anatomy. Another note is that Humphrey was helped out by a male saving of the homo with the job description of surgeon, who was named William Cooper for the drawings of his work done on this anatomical treatise. Let's just move on to the complete, to complete the biography section of Humphrey Ridley, shall we? Yes. Once Humphrey was around the age of 50 Earth Revolutions in 1703, he popped out another composition, baby, called Observations Medicaux Practique et Physiologique de Estimate et Hydrophobia. As one would assume, this title sounds like Observations of the Medical Practice in Physiological and Asthma and Hydrophobia. This work a documented medical experience observed during Humphrey's work as a physician. That's what he named his kid. Yeah, what a great strong name, huh, Void? It's a very it long rolls one. rolls off the tongue. You know, that would get people's attention. <laughs> you know, instead of just Gork, that's just Gork. That's just Void. That's just a nut gatherer. Oh, look at this guy. His name is Observations Medical Practice de Physica. They ask Monte hydrophobia. Hydrophobia? Yeah, that is sounds kind of more like. Is not being scared of water? That sounds more like reptilian language, if you ask me, Void. Hydrophobia. Yep. Hello, lizard people overlords. Fuck you. We will rule you. We'll show you. You and your goddamn reptilian ways. Cold blooded, ridiculous people. Yeah, go lay on a rock. Don't do that. They might get energy. Go lay on the ice cube. Hi, my name is Tom. What? Tom is a reptilian. Tom, don't you be talking about my buddy. No, Tom from um Tom from Green? MySpace. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he kind of looked like a lizard, huh, Void? Are you looking him up right now? No. Oh, <laughs> man, I was getting my hopes up. For nothing. What is Tom from MySpace doing right now? He's, he's probably a, banging a prostitute while shooting up heroin. No, probably. he's married and he's a photographer. Doesn't mean he can't do those other things. He probably traveled right now to a place away from his wife. 
and children and dog or cat. And he's like, hey, whore, guess what? I'm the creator of MySpace. You want to see I'll MySpace? Show, I want to show you my top eight. Yeah. Wait, you have eight? No, it was a MySpace joke. We had a top eight you put on your page. Yeah, your top friends. That's very nice. What about the people who are not there? That would suck balls if you thought that person was your best friend and your name wasn't even in the top eight. You'd be rethinking your whole life. He's 50 years old now. Holy fuck. I'm old. Actually 51. Oh, yeah, this is last Look at this. year. He can't name anything about the brain, although I talk about it all the time. Yet he knows the age of this guy named Tom. He well, never even met. Too. Tom Anderson... Would you guys like to go on back to topic? Yes. Yes. You know who um, lived past the age of 51, too? Humphrey Ridley. Along came the date of April of the year of 1708, just five years after producing this new book at the age of 55 years. Worth revolutions. Our main character, Humphrey Ridley, died. He was then buried at St. Andrews in Holborn. Next week, we will cover more about the neural anatomy book credited to the one named Humphrey Ridley, and we will give rise to his name once again. Are you going to buy his book, too? I don't even know if they have it. Oh. Maybe. It might be real expensive because it's, like, not such a popular dude. You know how that goes. Gotcha, yeah. Less copies sold, so. So, if you enjoyed this episode, follow us. We have a Face Fuck Your Mom book account called the Correlation Sensation Podcast. And I, Gork Mouth, am on Face Fuck Your Mom book. Then we have a Twitter account, a Gram of the Insta account as well for the podcast. The Nut Gatherer has a Talk of the Tick account called the Nut Gatherer, of course. And I do as well, Gort Mouth. But the Nut Gatherer is actually way more, you know, active. She has actual video clips of us recording. Well, more of her talking to us recording. So, if you want to see her beautiful face, you can check her out. <laughs> yes. Now, if you follow us on one or more of these accounts listed... In the episode description, we need to update that one, by the way. Comment on an episode or the show as a whole. Review us and share us to your friends, like a person willing to display the whole world their junk. And contact us, proving your absolute loyalty. We will review you. And once we have no doubt, you are a one of the chosen few. You shall be granted a position in our tribe. Now for you. You want to hear our list of fans in the tribe? Yes. We have the Squirrel Hunter, the Nut Gatherer, the Nut Picker, the Nut Commander, the Nut Driver, the Nut Trapper, the Nut Robber, the Nut Taster, the Nut Launcher, the Logger, the Wood Splitter, the Rock Smasher, the Rock Grinder, the Rock Milker, the Witch Doctor, and now... We have Greg Gruffiner from Texas. He's named Uncle Bustanuts. Yes! Nice. Every tribe needs a creepy old man. A creepy uncle. A creepy uncle. Uncle Bustanut. Just keep that guy away from me, please. And I quote. And my children. I quote. You mean just void? Yes. You need to be void of void, void. Uncle Bastanat. <laughs> but I quote him when I say this. He will treat everything like women. Everything. So void. Lock up your shoes, your flip-flops, your boots. Void. What boots? You got to lock up your shoes. He said he's going to treat everything like a woman. He's going to oh. fuck your soul if you don't. Or your souls. That's just creepy uncle stuff. That's why his name is Uncle Bustanut. 
It's his favorite food, corn nuts. The worst thing about it, Void, is I... No, they're acorns. Oh, okay. The worst thing about it is I'm worried he's going to actually bust our nuts for the squirrel hunting. That'll uh, ruin the market. So if you want to be included in the podcast and have a really good name... And a free t-shirt that glows in the dark. Goddamn right. Uncle Bustin' Nut actually has a t-shirt. Cool. Yeah, a guy from Texas got it before the nut launcher. Oh, wow. Yeah. We have three people from Texas that listen to us now. Oh, cool. One lives here, and two live in Texas. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. just one lives here. That, that are part of the tribe. People who are not in the tribe don't matter. Okay, yeah, you have to try and matter. Try and matter to us. Thank yeah. you for listening. Yeah, prove that you matter. <laughs> yeah, show us that you matter. If we matter to you, you will prove us. Prove to us that we matter to you. Yeah, don't yes. prove it to yourself. Prove yes. it to us. Yes, we'll we'll tell care you. about you. We'll tell you if you yeah. matter. We care about you so we can give you a t-shirt and a tribe title. And you'll be so cool that well, everyone will be jealous of your t-shirt. Then we'll put you to work on our company. You're a chosen one. One of us. One of us. One of us. One of us. Okay, we leave in peace. Bye. Bye-bye. See you later.